Hi everybody, and uh, season's greetings again to everybody. Uh, so 2018, so uh, that should be an interesting year, and we'll see what you can do. Um, this video here is just looking at some initial ideas and thoughts for uh, the next rig. I want this one to be uh, what I've sort of termed a keeper. The one we built over here was sort of very much just a, um, a simplified radio, which while it worked well, it's, it's it was just purely just sort of looking at some of the theory and what I want to do now, I want to rebuild one which I can um, set aside as, I guess, my keeper, at which I can sort of upgrade as we go along with future builds and, and, and design different things. So what I'm thinking about for this particular radio is I want it to be dual band. Um, I like 80 metres, certainly here in New Zealand. It's a, it's a nice friendly band um, and it looks like I've uh, sort of come across a few home brewers, so that'll be good to sort of um, keep track of that one. And then uh, also 20 meters. Uh, I've got a 20 meter antenna set up here, so um, that might be good. So, so ground wave for 80 meters and a bit of sky wave and maybe a, some potentially some DX um, on 20 meters. So uh, that's going to be the aim for the radio. So it'll be two bands, um, which will be interesting because then we'll have to start looking at, especially on the power amplifier here, um, some gain compensation uh, because that's that's quite a quite a variance in gain there. So therefore the radio will have to be lower sideband and upper sideband, so lower for 80 metres and upper sideband for 20. Um, if we just sort of look at the output, um, I'm quite keen to use these two um, UHF power amplifiers, RF power transistors. Um, they're designated for 12.5 volt UHF large signal amplifier applications, so um, I was kindly given these by a local ham, so I'm quite keen to use these. Um, so what I'd like to do is, is look at a power amplifier which um, is putting out sort of a, a good sort of 10 to 20 watts um, and I think I'll probably play around again with a, a push-pull style amplifier so that'll be the plan for output power so well above that sort of 5 watts. Um, so going through so uh, for the mixes I think um, because of the homebrew nature, I'll reuse uh, the two homebrew mixes over here. Um, the alternative is to use uh, these SBL ones, which certainly work very well. Um, and as we saw in that earlier video for the other build, you know, my uh, uneducated ear, I didn't hear much difference between um, this mixer here, the homebrew mixer, with the matched uh, 4148s uh, and the commercial mixer. Um, so I think at this stage I'll, I'll tear those out and we'll use those again um, vice, uh, vice these uh, SBL ones. Um, the crystal filter, um, I was thinking about using uh, these. I got these on eBay, um, but I've sort of gone off that idea. So on eBay you can get for 30 US this board here which comes out of a, a commercial piece of equipment and um, it's got a lower sideband and an upper sideband um, filter for, uh, for SSB as well as an AM uh, filter. I was looking to use one of these but I'm, I'm quite conscious that people don't necessarily have access to, to commercial filters. So what I'm going to do initially, and uh, if it works out well then it will certainly stay in, uh, I'm going to homebrew a crystal filter out of some, um, I've got a sort of a, a few of these uh, 8 megahertz crystals. So I've been sort of played around with these many, many months ago and uh, was just sort of tinkering. But what we'll do is we'll look at um, home brewing up a, uh, a ladder crystal filter, so a um, four pole, so four crystals, and um, we will uh, use that as our as our main filter. Um, we'll do the same switching arrangement where. Um, Signal direction is always through one one way through the two IF amplifiers for both transmit and receive. So we'll just use that same crossover relay as we had uh, in the in the earlier build. Um, that works well. And it just means we just cut down on on two amplifiers. Um, we'll look at a, a a slightly better quality um, power amplifier. So we'll probably look at it. Um, so I think it's a five three three four, so a low noise op amp. So we'll look at some options for that. Um, and then, once again, uh, because I particularly like them, so I'm going to continue using them, uh, the SI5351 um, being commanded by a Pro Mini. Um, 
and what I think I'll, I'll use this time, just to be a little more interesting, is we'll use this small uh, 1.8 inch TFT. So I'll just tinker around this with the with the, with the Uno. So we'll write some code for that. Um, it's 128 by 160, so it's not terribly high res, but you know we don't need to display terribly much on that. So we'll get away from using the old uh, two line LCD, and we'll go for a TFT. Um, we'll just be curious to see how much noise this potentially generates. So to be careful of that one. Um, so in terms of the software, I think we'll um, have a little bit more functionality on that. So uh, I'm looking at having, um, for the software running on this, uh, a VFO A and B. Um, and I'll have a uh, memory as well. So I certainly notice on some of the, uh, certainly on the 80 meter band, there's certain frequencies which uh, get used often um, by various SCADs. So I'll have those built into the radio as, as, as memories. So into that Pro Mini we'll have not only the rotary encoder, but we'll have a, uh, a rotary switch of sorts which will command that into uh, various modes. Um, so that'll be the software running on that. Um, and I don't know if people want to look into that software, but um, you know, I'm more than happy to, to make a video looking at uh, looking at some of that code. Like I say, the uh, the TFT um, second mixer microphone. So the microphone for this one, uh, rather than using that little electret which we used uh, in the last radio, we'll go a little bit proper this time. Got an old Yezu microphone here, supposedly 500 ohms. So we'll use that, um, which will allow us to then use the PTT as opposed to uh, the switch. Uh, and by using the the PTT key, um, we'll use some of these relays that are available from a, a local um, supply here. So that there is a double pole, double throw, um, and quite good sort of separation between the two sides. So I think that'll use be, that'll be quite good. So again, that was a double pole, double throw switch over there. So for here, we'll do the same thing. We'll have RF being switched on one side, and then our 12 volts being switched between the receiver circuits and the transmit circuits. Um, which will be quite good. Uh, I've got a couple of those. I don't know if we want to use the second one, but we'll see how things play out. But like I say, the idea is to use this. We can key this. This goes clunk, and uh, effectively we've got the same as we had with the old uh, mechanical switch. Um, so the other thing which we'll uh, use for this one, um, I want to make this radio around the J310s. So. Um, if you look at the old radios, you know, the Kenwoods and the Yezus and the like, um, there's a whole lot of dual gate MOSFETs on those radios. So, um, uh, same thing again, I'm going to uh, look at using a, a dual gate configuration out of two J310s uh, in Cascode. Um, so, we'll, uh, we'll do that again. And we'll do that for um, as many circuits as we can. So, certainly for our antenna ramp, the two IF amps, um, probably not for the audio amp, mic amp probably not, um, and we'll see what happens with, in line uh, with the um, with the power amplifier. What we do there, uh, probably may look to go back to using um, because this one here is not going to be as simple as the as the last radio. This is going to be a little bit more complex. We might sort of reuse some bits of the junk box. So uh, these are two N three O five fours. Oh, so five three. So we'll use those. What am I saying? Uh, we'll reuse those for this particular radio. Um, yeah. So I think it's probably about all. I think for this particular radio. Uh, let me just double check. Um, I got the impression that uh, looking at the maths was useful uh, in the last radio. So where we can um, and where it's appropriate, we will we'll look at some of the uh, behind the scenes maths, or at least look at the logic um, of what I was thinking. Or what we are thinking collectively uh, when we put this radio together. Um, we'll run it on 13.8 volts. So that'll be um, that'll be a bit, bit different from that radio that was on 12. We'll run this on 13.8. Uh, and once again, we'll look to use um, LT Spice where we can. So we'll look at doing the, the theoretical circuit. We'll model it in LT Spice, tune it, uh, and then we'll build it and see what happens in real life. Um, acknowledging that uh, um, exper oh, not experimental, sorry, um, 
uh, before I forget. Uh, simulated circuits often perform quite differently uh, in the real world, but it's certainly a good way of, of sort of tinkering and, and fine tuning the circuit before actually committing it to solder. Um, ADC, I just mentioned down here, I want to have an ADC circuit here. And the beauty of using this, um, the dual J310s, is we can use the, se the, se the second gate on uh, certainly the two IF amps, we can uh, apply AGC. So we'll look to do that uh, on this radio and probably have that being derived from, um, from the audio level. So we'll look at doing that. Um, what else? We talked about the crystal filter, J310s, um, 10 to 20 watts, 80 slash 20 meters. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably about all here. So I won't, uh, I won't ramble on any longer than this. Um, if anybody else has got some ideas, sing out. Uh, in future builds, we may look at going higher up. Um, I, I acknowledge that um, uh, that I'm not using uh, some, some pre-made amplifier blocks that are out there, but I'm sort of quite keen to use discrete components at the stage. Um, I certainly enjoy using the discrete components, and so I think for, for the time being, I'll continue to do that. Um, just looking at that meter there, we'll reuse that one. Uh, and we will have that uh, looking at the AGC line which will give us our S meter and we'll also um, do a pick off, uh, pick off of the power and um, we'll smooth it this time that was dancing around quite a bit because I didn't bother putting any kind of smoothing in on that pick off uh, and we'll look to use that to, to monitor our output power um, I'm not quite sure which scale we're going to use because that's 10 watts and we're going to be pretty bit higher than that one um, I do have this one lying over here, and I see that scale there goes from 10, 15, 20, 25. So um, could be an option to use this particular one. Um, <clears throat> now we've got our S meter on top, and then we can use that blue scale. Could be our power meter, which gives us 25 watts. So uh, maybe that's the plan. We'll use this one. Other than that, uh, that's probably enough for now. Um, any ideas? Please sing out and. Uh, if everybody's happy, then we'll do a similar series as we did last time. We'll just break it down module by module, um, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to start by doing the crystal filter, um, and then we will look at uh, probably going... Uh, what's the best way of doing things? We can either... We'll probably go... I think the good way is, uh, which has been done by others, is start off with the... Once we've done the crystal filter, we'll do the audio amp, and then we can work back towards um, back towards the antenna. The beauty there is, as you build each circuit, you can test to see if it's working. So once you've built the audio amp, shove your finger on the input. If you hear a hum, that's working. Righto. Let's introduce one of those filters with some RF and some um, and a VFO, and we've got a direct conversion radio, and that'll at least check out our software and our SI5351, and then we can roll the two IF amps, and then the second um, mixer, turn it into a super hit, uh, and we can go from there. So that'll be the, that'll be the build uh, for this particular radio. Uh, it's worked in the past, and it's certainly the one that I'll do again. Okay, 73s everybody. Um, leave any comments, whatever, and uh, we will see you for the next video, which will be uh, looking at the crystal filter. Until then.